everybody, how are you doing? It's Crystal Ann Compton, and I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In today's video, I'm gonna be answering a question from one of my subscribers, a great question. I think we're all going to be interested in the answer. It also has to do with mediumship, and you know I'm focused on mediumship because in just a few weeks, we are launching our first ever 2019 mediumship intensive, and when I say we, I mean myself and Trisha Carr, who happens to be an enlightened fairy channel prophet fantastic channel and teacher i cannot say enough about this woman just being in her presence recalibrates who it is that you are both of us are joining together to teach a six-week intensive in which we connect you with your innate ability to communicate with rendezvous with and experience the multi-dimensional universe in which you live and that includes, of course, your departed loved ones, which is most commonly associated with mediumship, but also we're gonna be teaching you about soul rescue, meaning for those beings stuck in 4D, like how can we get them out and how can we get them to the other side? We're also gonna be teaching you about how to interact with your angels, ascended masters. We're gonna talk about your psychic abilities. We're gonna talk about telepathy. We're gonna teach you how to read energy. There is so much that we are going to be going over in this program and that is why it is called an intensive. And let me just say again, mediumship is for everyone. When I say that, I want you to believe me. Mediumship is natural. It's part of being a human. There's nothing special or out of this world about it. It's just a faculty that shows up when we expand our awareness sufficiently enough to allow for it. If we expand our perception, our consciousness, if we open up and have the intention to experience on a higher level, well then guess what? That is exactly what will happen. And mediumship is part of that perception. So if you want to learn how to turn on your mediumship abilities, drop down into the description, check out the link, go to the registration page and have a look because it's going to be fantastic. Trust me. And I would love to see you in the program. All right. Enough about that. Let's get right into this question. This comes from Gaynor Ventresco. What a great name. Gaynor Ventresco. Gaynor asks or says, hi, beautiful. I'm voguing. I don't know. I'm voguing, voguing. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, beautiful. I would like to ask you, please, what are the top three things we can do to develop our mediumship? Thanks and much love. Gainer Helene. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, what are the top three things that we can do to develop our mediumship? Well, there are so many things that we can do, but I'm going to try and whittle it down to three things. I'm going to start with identification, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of the story so that you understand what I'm talking about here. Many moons ago, years ago, I was part of a psychic program, and it was really cool. I learned a lot, but I was already psychic going into it. It was just, actually the best thing about it was the community of, of folks that were there. But one of the thing, things I noticed as an intuitive were the mediums, the people who were able to talk to dead people. I just thought it was so cool at the time. And every now and again, there would be a spirit that would amble into a reading that I was given or would amble into my bedroom at night. And I would have mediumistic abilities, but I really wanted to have those on a higher level with more frequency. And so I went to a mentor in the program and I asked him, and he, was a, he is a famous medium, very evidential, meaning he'll give you details, specifics, and that's what you want from a medium. I went to him and I said, hey, you know, I know I'm psychic and I, I know I'm intuitive and clairvoyant, but I really want to develop my mediumship. Tell me how to be a medium. And his answer is my first answer to you. His answer to me was, well, Crystal, if you want to be a medium, be a medium. And so I say to you, Gaynor Ventresco, if you want to be a medium, be a medium. And of course, you might say to me, well, yeah, I want to be a medium, but I'm not a medium. Well, that's not what, we're, what we mean here. What he was really saying to me that day was, if you want to be a medium, start walking around the planet right now, vibrating as a medium, speak as a medium, hang out with other mediums, read books on mediumship, inundate yourself in all things mediumship and if you point your interest in this sort of a concentrated way, the mediumship itself will be drawn to you magnetically. 
Truly, where your interest goes, all the evidences flow. And so he said, introduce yourself not as crystal, psychic, intuitive. Introduce yourself as crystal, psychic, medium, and feel it. It's almost like fake it till you make it, which is a bit disingenuous. It's not really that. It's about occupying the energy of the end, as Neville Goddard says. The end here is the result that you want. Live in the result that you want. Be the result that you want. If you want to be beautiful, for example, then be beautiful. Walk around feeling beautiful. Doing all of the things a beautiful person might do. Occupy. Vibrate in that energy. And the beauty is attracted to you effortlessly. The universe provides it to you. The same thing with mediumship. So, Gator, if you want to be a medium, be a medium. Read these books. Hang out with mediums. Take those courses. Immerse yourself in the energy of mediumship, and you will find, in rather short order, you will have mediumistic experiences. In fact, for me, it didn't take months, it didn't take years for me to have full-blown mediumship experiences, experiences that were full-bodied and that I could actually call into being. It took two weeks. It took two weeks of immersing myself in this energy and occupying the energy of mediumship before I was actually doing a lot of mediumship work. Now, not for nothing, <laughs> it turned out I didn't really want to do that work. Um, I, I just I wanted to do it for the moment. It seemed kind of cool, but ultimately my interests were pointed in another direction. And curiously, the mediumship tapered off and it went back to sort of spontaneous mediumship every now and again. And that's perfectly fine with me. So have that intention. Intention is so important. Intentions are thoughts with direction, thoughts with movement. They're going somewhere. They're also productive and creative. So have the intention that you are a medium. Now, the second thing that you want to do for sure, whether you want to be a medium or not, if you just want to be spiritually connected, if you just want to be feeling bliss and love and knowing that you know that you know that you're never alone, then you also want to do this. And that is meditation. Now, before I hear the collective groan of the entire planet, please bear with me. Meditation is so important. It truly is. It is literally spending time proximate to source energy. Source energy is the highest, most divine energy any of us can ever come into contact with. And it's so powerful that it transforms who it is that we are. See, this is how energy works. Are you listening? This is important. This is how energy works. The stronger energy always makes the more substantial change to the lesser energy. Now, both energies impact the other and change the other. But the stronger energy always makes the substantial change to the lesser or more passive energy. And in the scenario of meditation, the stronger energy is the strongest energy. That's God energy, creator energy. And when we sidle up to creator energy by virtue of going into meditation, and sliding into that sweet spot of connection, God's energy changes us in every way, mind, body, and spirit. We can be healed this way in the body just through meditation. Our mind, our thoughts, our narratives, our anxieties can be brought into alignment just by spending time in the sweet spot with God. And our spirit connects more vastly and dynamically when we spend this time in meditation. When we spend time with God, we become like God, period. We become like God. And we begin to see, populated in our lives, the attributes of the God with whom we dwell. And these attributes aren't like human attributes. Crystal with her brown hair, that's an attribute. Crystal with her style of speaking, that's an attribute. But these are human attributes. God's attributes are miraculous, you see. God's attributes are healing, prosperity, abundance, wellness. God's attributes are fully connected, evidential, intuitive faculties. All of this and so much more is part of who God is. And we become like God as we dwell in the energy of God. So if you want those faculties... You want to be clairvoyant, you want to dream dreams, you want to have visions, or you want to be a medium, then you want to make sure you're meditating. And when I say meditating, I don't mean 
every now and again. I mean, every day. I mean, have a goal. <laughs> Maybe right now you meditate once a week. That's good. You're meditating, but you need to bump it up maybe to three, four, five times a week until you get to seven times a week. Now, you might be already meditating for seven times a week, but only 20 minutes a session, and that's good. But if you want to have more time in the transformation, bump that 20 minutes up to 40 minutes. Bump it up to an hour. Make that your focus. Meditation is a game changer. Now, the problem with meditation is that so many of us think it's hard, and it can be. It can be. For those of us with racing thoughts, for those of us with high intelligence and a mind that's always computing and talking, it can be work or seem like work to get those thoughts to fall away. But do that work because there will come a point, trust me, where those thoughts will give way and you will slide into this sweet spot I'm speaking of. And once you get there, once you find it, you will be so addicted, you'll want to get right back there same time next day and go even longer. There will come a point point when the difficulty falls away and you'll be sidled up right there next to source energy and that's what you want. Last but not least, frequency. Frequency and vibration. The higher in vibration you are, the closer to God. And what happens again when we get close to God? We become like God. We begin to occupy the energy of God and God changes us. The problem with 3D reality and 3D living is that it's tough. We've got kids. We've got mortgages. We've got jobs. We've got illnesses. We've got heartbreak. We've got failure. We've got trauma. Of course, we have a lot of good things as well, but there's a lot of suffering that is built into this particular 3D experience. And the challenge of the soul has always been to pivot away from what the senses tell us is true. The senses tell us my bank account is true. The senses tell us my divorce is true. We pivot away from what the senses tell us are true, and we point our attention and our interest and truly I say our vibration in the direction of the divine and we believe that now the easiest way to do that to raise your vibration to bring it into alignment with source energy and the higher self is to find ways in your day-to-day 3d life to raise your vibration and raising your vibration feels in the human body like joy and happiness, and laughter, and mirth, and playfulness. And that's all a part of high vibration. High vibration also feels like detoxification, getting the gunk out of the body, detoxification of the mind. So practices and techniques that you can do to bring all of this into alignment, that kind of detoxification or fine tunement this is also high vibration. So I would ask you, all of you, to make a list of at least 10 things that make you happy, make you smile, make you laugh. You just love to do them. And please make these possible, (laughs) make these possible. For example, I love going to Dublin and I love going to Prague. I love going to Australia. I've done these things. It was so great. I was so high vibe while I was there, but can I do that this week? No. Can I do that today? No. I have to pick possible things that I can do every day. So what are those things for you? For me, I have a few things. I love hanging out with my doggie. I love loving on my dogs. I love getting outside into nature. I love long walks where I get to look at all the neighborhood cows. Oh, they are so cute. Don't get me started. I love those cows and I will stand there and talk to them. And those longhorn cows will just look at me like, who is this crazy lady? But it brings me joy. And the sunlight brings me joy. And nature brings me joy. And just moving my body, that makes me happy. Also gardening, getting out and putting my hands in the dirt, planting things and harvesting things. Ooh, I get a lot of joy from that. Also singing and dancing and cooking. These are simple, possible things. But I made a list of these things. And every single day, just like meditation, in fact, maybe even more important than meditation, That's not a competition, but that's how important it is. I make it a point to do as many of those things on my list as possible. 
I get home from a long day at work and it was a bad day and it was a hard day and my vibration is low. I look at my list and I think, you know what, let me go take a walk and be with the cows. Or better yet, let me take my dogs with me. We can all go and take a walk and talk to the cows. Or let me, it's sun's setting, but I can still get out into my garden and I can pick my tomatoes and I can weed and I can water and I can be with the earth. If I know what brings me joy, I can do those things. And here's why this is important. It's so important because the more time we spend in high vibration, the more the universe delivers to us opportunities for more high vibration experiences. When we are in joy and when we are in love and when we are in happiness and mirth and laughter, the universe receives the signal of this and it is a frequency, my friends. It is a signal. The universe receives this and delivers unto us more of the same. So we can't indulge our lower negative vibrations and feelings because the universe will also return those to us. Instead, we have to become disciplined and stay in the high vibration. This is why I call it the bliss discipline. Frequency is so important. The higher the frequency, the higher the vibration, the closer we are to God. And when we are in the energy, in the dwelling place of God, we are transformed. That is ascension. Mediumship just becomes a byproduct of that. Remember when Christ said, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things are just added unto you? That's what he's talking about. Seek first the energy of God. Be in that. Dwell in that. And the kingdom of that, by the way, exists within you. Do that first and you'll become a medium. Don't you worry about it. You'll have everything you need. Don't you worry about it. So to recap, intention, identifying as that which you want to be. You are that and you've always been that. Second, meditation. Get into the time and space where your energy meets sources and you are changed as a result. And last but not least, vibration. Doing those things that raise your frequency and raise your vibration so that God can change you and the universe can return to you beautiful, delicious experiences that give you even more high vibration. How do you like that, Gaynor Ventresco? Did you like that answer? I hope so, because it's not just about mediumship. It's about spiritual connection. It's about knowing that God is with you. It's about living an evidential, dynamic life filled with synchronicities, filled with serendipity. That's what it's about. All of those recommendations will help you get mediumship and so much more. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, help a sister out. And until next time, don't you forget that I've got nothing but love for you, baby. Bye. Join Trisha Carr and I for the 2019 Mediumship Intensive starting this September 9th. Students of the Intensive will learn how to open their intuitive perception and fearlessly navigate the beautiful world of spirit, communicate with departed loved ones, beings of light, angels, masters, and more. Mediumship is absolutely natural and it's for everyone. Check the link in the description of this video to learn more.